Hello history fans, today we are at Donotar Castle. The history of Donotar Castle can be traced back to at least 400 AD, when Saint Ninian, an early Christian missionary, established a place of worship on the site where the castle now stands, and converted the Picts of Donotar to Christianity. There is evidence that the Picts occupied the area, as just north of the castle the old Pictish hill fort was discovered. It is not known when the site was fortified, but it is likely that it was in the 7th century. Okay, so we've done 226 steps so far, and we've just managed to get to the gatehouse, and I'm now standing in the warden's quarters of the gatehouse, and it is pretty impressive. In 900 AD, King Donald II of Scotland was killed at Donotar, by an invading Viking force which went on to destroy the buildings. In 1297, during the Wars of Independence, after the invasion of Scotland by English forces, William Wallace attacked and killed the entire English garrison at Donotar, taking it back under Scottish control. From the gatehouse we make our way towards the Tower House. This was the first stone castle at Donotar, built in 1392 by Sir William Keith, Great Marischal of Scotland. It has a stone vaulted basement and originally had three further stories and stood 15 metres high and included a great hall and a private chamber for the Lord with bedrooms upstairs. I've now climbed up into the castle keep. I'm not sure if you can see when I turn the camera around but there's a lovely view. In 1395 Pope Benedict XIII intervened in a dispute over the building of the keep at Donotar on consecrated ground. Beside the tower house is a storehouse and a blacksmith's forge with a large chimney. So behind me here is the stables for the castle. Mary Queen of Scots visited the castle in 1562, returning two years later. In 1593 George Keith, 5th Earl Marischal, added more buildings to Donotar. Here we can see Waterton's lodging, built around 1574. It includes a hall and kitchen at ground level, with private chambers above. Here we can see the remains of a stone chapel, consecrated in 1276 by William Wishart, Bishop of St Andrews. So this area is called the Thief's Hole where people were locked up for minor offences. In 1581, George Keefe, 5th Earl Marischal, began to transform the medieval fortress into a more comfortable home. We are now exploring the palace comprising a series of ranges around a quadrangle. It would have been luxurious living quarters with sea views. In 1639, William Keefe, 7th Earl Marischal, declared allegiance to the Covenanters, resisting religious reforms of Charles I. As the Civil War developed, James Graham, 1st Marquis of Montrose, marched at the head of a Royalist army to attempt negotiation with the Earl Marischal. The Earl remained at Donotar, repeatedly refusing diplomacy, even when Montrose laid waste to Stonehaven and the Barony of Donotar. During the War of Three Kingdoms in the mid-1640s, Charles II was a guest of the 7th Earl Marischal. His arrival in Scotland in 1650 prompted an invasion by Oliver Cromwell's parliamentary army. Donotar Castle played a vital role in the safekeeping of the Scottish Crown Jewels, the Honours of Scotland. In the Jacobite Rising of 1715, George Keefe, the 10th Earl of Marischal, took an active role with the rebels. After the Rising was abandoned, Lord Marischal fled to the continent. His titles and estates, including Donotar, were forfeited to the Crown. The seized estates were purchased in 1720 by the York Buildings Company, who dismantled much of the castle. Hello history fans, today we are at Dun Donotar. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me on this tour of Donotar Castle. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. And you can also hit the notification bell and I'll let you know next time I upload a video. Bye for now.